Hi, my name is Frank, and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to do a little bit different kind of video. What happened was uh, a week or so ago I just did uh, a remote demonstration for wood turning club. And uh, in that demo I uh, turned a square piece. So what I'm going to do is just take excerpts from that uh, that demonstration I did and then turn that into uh, a shorter video for posting. So basically I'm going to take a square piece, something like this, two inches thick, maybe 11 or 12 inches square, and just show you how I go about turning a square piece. Uh, and I end up dyeing the piece a little bit. There's the back and there's the front. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's see how that's going to work this week. This is the piece we're going to turn tonight. It's uh, it's totally well, relatively square. Again, I've not uh, I've not tried to square it up. the uh, The sides are still still rough rough cut right from when I purchased the wood. And I just cut this on the bandsaw. Sur sorry, I cut this on the chop saw. Now. If we take a look at the top view here. So this is a one way screw chuck. And when, when you can, tr try to use the largest jaws that you have on the piece. It just gives you a lot more stability on, on a piece if you can use larger jaws. And if you've not used a screw chuck, it's important to make sure you line up these little grooves these little grooves should be lined up with, with the spot in the chuck where they, the grooves register. And for these one-way chucks, it's basically lining up, lining up this groove with the, uh, the, sc the screws that hold in the, uh, the different jaws. So then I tighten it up till it's almost tight. And then you'll notice there's a little bit of play in here. So what a lot of people do is they just tighten this up and forget about it. But what you should do is just before you tighten it up, pull this screw out and, it, and it'll go as far as it can go, then do your tightening. And that prevents this thing from when you screw it on, it prevents it from trying to pull the screw out and loosening up the face because you want that up nice and tight up against the face. Okay, so the shape I'm going after tonight, hopefully you can see, see it here. It's just a general, just a very simple, just a very simple shape here. I'm gonna use a dovetail a tenant here on the back or, or, or bottom of the piece and, and just do a, just a gradual square piece here. Okay, so from a safety perspective, if uh, on these square bowls, you got to be really aware of where the out, even if they're not square bowls, even if it's a burl or a triangular piece, the f your furthest piece out, you really got to be aware of where that is so that you, you don't inadvertently put your hand here and, and get and get caught on it. For me, I normally don't mark it because my practice with all of these is that I always keep my hand on this side of the tool rest, which automatically keeps me out of trouble. 
So I'm just going to put in a view, another view here from the end as well. There we go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to do three different kind of cuts here to start this. And then I'll just ex sort of explain the cuts as I'm going. Okay. Now I've done this demo before and people have said that the, it looks like the piece is turning quite slow, but that's just the effect of the camera. The piece is actually, I don't have a readout on this lathe, but yeah, I'm guessing 1200, 1400, something like that. Maybe more, maybe more than that. So my pivot cuts are, are gonna cut at 90 degrees. Okay, now I'm going to do some pull cuts which is for me, it's one of my favorite cuts just because I don't know, I just like doing it. So again, same as the other side, I'm gonna use the, the first quarter inch of the, of the gouge only. And I have the uh, tool, the bottom of the tool or the end of the tool way down in my pocket. So it's, it's down quite a bit. And, and I'm trying to rub the bevel. So this isn't a flat scraping cut. This is, this is a bevel rubbing cut and you, get shave, and you get shavings. Um, so that's the second cut. The third cut is, is basically just a regular push cut. And this is what I like to do for my finishing cuts. So I'm just going to mark for the uh, for the uh, tenon. I'm going to establish the uh, this. I'm going to establish this tenon right now. Yes, the way I establish the uh, the dovetail, I'm going to use that same little uh, skew that I used before, and the angle on the skew is exactly the angle of my dovetail. So when I push it in, it's going to always give me the, exactly the right angle. Yeah, because of that, I might not be able to do the cut all in one pass. So let me, uh, let's just see how it works. So I'm trying to take a very, very light skim cut I really slow down my tool progression here. I'm getting a few lines, but not a lot.
So I use this as a shear scraper or negative rake scraper. So if I'm in the if I'm in a solid area, I just need to pull this back just a little bit. If I'm in a solid area here, I'll use this up at a 45 degree angle, not flat, but up at 45. And I'll just take out that little line. And basically when the pencil line is gone, usually the line, the little line or groove is gone as well. Now out here, I find when it's an interrupted cut that the uh, holding this thing on a 45 degrees doesn't, doesn't work quite as well. It bounces around too much. So when it's an interrupted cut, I tend to hold this just flat on the tool rest and then just go, just go back and forth very, very lightly. Yeah, I think that's it for the back. So we can now move on to turn the piece around and work on the other side. So the cuts here are now all going to be push cuts. I realize that some of the video is a bit disjointed and stops and starts and that's because I was trying to reduce basically a two-hour demonstration into an 18-minute uh, video so hopefully it works out okay so here I'm doing I'm continuing with push cuts and just moving down in stages to get the thickness I want Okay. So if you can see the line here, so I'm, I'm pretty well at my final thickness at, <clears throat> at the very outer edge, but there's, it's still thick in between as I get further down. So I'm gonna start the cut maybe an inch or two, maybe an inch in, and then just, just go in from there. This is that pivot cut I showed you right at the very beginning.
Now the next, the next part of this, the next part of, of this is really exactly the same as I've done on the outside. I'm just gonna continue making push cuts here, getting a final surface and uh, approaching it with my, uh, my sharper tool and doing a final if there's any ridge in between where the previous first two inches were and the next few inches, I'll, I'll use that shear scraper to get out any little ridges there. Okay, so I, when I die, I always start with a dark color. Uh, be it blue or black or dark red or or dark green or dark purple. So I, I start with a dark color, uh, sand it back, and then either put more of that color or another color, or sometimes I do splotches. So there's there's many different ways to do this. But the first application is usually the simplest. I just uh, sort of run, put the dye over the entire piece and be done with it kind of thing. I don't really worry about it being splotchy. If it's splotchy, usually I'm looking for the splotchiness so that there's some distinction in the different areas. I mean, if it's too unsightly, I'll just sand that area back a little bit more, or you can spray alcohol, you can spritz alcohol over it and then just go over it with a, with a cloth that has no color in it. So yeah, there, that's it. There's not much to it, pretty simple. Now this is the finished piece. I've introduced a few different colors on the right hand side and I've taken uh, a wood burning pen, pyrography pen and uh, put in a tree.